The Centre for Assisted Reproduction, Singapore General Hospital, or CARE, has been looking after patients since 1987 and have delivered over 1,500 IVF babies. The aim of this counselling session is to give you a clearer picture of what IVF is about and the processes involved. After having seen your doctors who have recommended IVF as an option, this session is to help you make a decision as to whether IVF is indeed the appropriate treatment for you. If you have any questions, please feel free to note them down and ask after this session. We will be covering the points as listed. We will start with what happens during natural conception. This is the female reproductive organ. The womb is where the unborn baby develops. The cervix is the neck of the womb. The vagina is where sperm is deposited during intercourse and through which menses flow. The ovary stores and releases eggs at ovulation. It also produces the female hormones. The fallopian tube is the passageway between the womb and the ovaries. In a woman with regular menstrual cycle, an egg that is released every month is swept into the fallopian tube. During intercourse, sperm deposited in the vagina will swim through the cervix and womb towards the fallopian tubes. The sperm swim by rapid whiplash motion of the tail towards the fallopian tube. The egg and the sperm will usually meet at the widest part of the fallopian tube. The sperm will try to fertilize the egg. By natural selection, usually only one sperm will be able to fertilize the egg. If fertilization occurs, the fertilized egg or embryo will travel through the tube back into the womb. During this journey, the cells in the embryo will divide and reach the womb around the fifth day. If it implants into the lining of the womb, a pregnancy will result. The chance of getting pregnant naturally every month is about 20%. If implantation does not occur, the womb lining is shed and menses will ensue. How is IVF different from normal conception? Unlike natural conception, eggs have to be retrieved from the women's ovary and then fertilized with the sperm in the laboratory. This is how the name test tube baby came about. The embryos are then placed into the womb and implantation occurs just like in the natural conception. If implantation is successful, pregnancy will result. Who needs IVF? IVF was first designed to help women with blocked tubes. When the tubes are blocked, the sperm cannot get to the egg. IVF bypasses the necessity to have functioning patent fallopian tubes as fertilization occurs in the test tube. The commonest cause of blocked tubes is infection. The indication for IVF has expanded. It can help couples with problems of low or poor sperm quality or when sperm have to be surgically retrieved. It is also indicated for endometriosis, a condition where the inner lining of the womb is found in places outside the womb. IVF also helps couples who have been trying for a while without success and no obvious cause can be found. Women with ovulation problems, advanced age, or those couple who require donor egg or sperm, as well as those who need pre-implantation genetic diagnosis for hereditary genetic problems, may also need IVF. What is the workflow and assessment before IVF? This is our IVF patient workflow. After this counselling session, if you decide to proceed, call CARE to let our nurses know of your decision. They will arrange the pre-IVF assessment test for you. As part of this assessment, you will have to be tested for HIV, Hepatitis B, Hepatitis C, as well as syphilis in any recognised laboratories in Singapore in accordance with the Ministry of Health guidelines. The validity of these tests is for a year, except for HIV, which is for six months. 
Full blood count is performed to assess your health and to screen for thalassemia, a common genetic disorder. The semen and cervix are also screened for infection, and a pap smear is performed if not done recently. Rubella immunity for the wife is also checked. If she is not immune, vaccination may be considered before starting IVF. Rubella or German measles is a viral infection that may cause fetal anomaly if infection occurs during pregnancy. Other necessary tests are a pelvic scan and hormone levels of the wife performed around the second day of her menses. These tests give us an idea of the number of potential eggs obtainable together with her age, weight and diagnosis will be considered in deciding the appropriate ovarian stimulation. For the husband, a recent sperm analysis and other specialized sperm tests may be performed to determine if conventional IVF or ICSI is required. Based on the results, the team will decide on the appropriate treatment plan. Sometimes, the doctor would like to perform an optional assessment called the trial cannulation. The purpose of this is to assess the pathway from the cervix to the uterine cavity to prepare for embryo transfer. Most of the time, this can be done easily, but occasionally, it may be difficult and require certain equipment and preparation. After the assessment, your case will be discussed at our weekly team meeting. Your doctor will then meet you to explain the team's recommendations, go through the consent, and perform a physical assessment to assess the suitability for sedation. The nurse will then plan with you the ideal time to start your treatment. This will depend on your menstrual cycle, your availability, and our care workload. What happens during your IVF cycle? The IVF cycle can be divided into the following stages. Each of these will be explained in a moment. During the stimulation phase, the wife will receive hormone injections. These hormones are similar to the ones produced naturally, but in higher doses so as to produce at least 3 eggs. This phase lasts about 2 weeks. All women will be taught so that they can do their injections by themselves at home as this would be more convenient. At the time of stimulation, there is also a need to prevent release of the eggs triggered by your own body's feedback mechanism. There are different suppression regimes tailored according to your needs. For the long cycle, suppression starts before stimulation. For the short cycle, suppression occurs concurrently with stimulation. For the antagonist cycle, suppression occurs after stimulation has commenced, but before the follicles are too large. Transvaginal scans are performed to track the response of your ovaries to the hormones. These scans are usually performed in the morning. After the scan, you can resume your normal activities or go to work. This is a picture of an ultrasound scan of a stimulated ovary. Follicles are sacs which contain potential eggs. These follicles will grow and are measured during stimulation. However, not every follicle will contain an egg. Some of them may be empty. We will only know the exact number of eggs after egg collection. Sometimes, there is no or little response to the hormones and the cycle may have to be abandoned. Usually, 3 to 5 scans are required. Type of cycle will be decided by the team, tailored to your condition and needs. In all cycles, when at least 3 follicles are of adequate size, another injection is given to trigger the maturation of the eggs. Once this trigger injection is given, Instructions will be given to come for egg collection about 36 hours later. The wife will need to fast after 12 midnight on the day before egg collection. Egg collection is performed under ultrasound guidance. 
Husbands are encouraged to accompany their wives during procedure. The doctor will give the wife a mild sedation and perform a transvaginal scan to assess the follicles. A special needle attached to the vagina probe is then used to puncture the follicles and aspirate the follicular fluid into a test tube. This is then passed to the embryologist who will look for the eggs. This procedure takes about 10 to 20 minutes. Patients usually rest for about an hour after the procedure before being discharged. Fresh semen sample is required in the morning before egg collection. This can be collected in care or at home. For husbands who may not be present on the day or have difficulty producing semen sample, there is an option of storing semen beforehand. For conventional IVF, the eggs are then placed together with the sperm and fertilization will be checked the next day. For ICSI or intracytoplasmic sperm injection, the embryologist will select the most normal looking sperm and immobilize it by hitting the tail. The selected sperm will be drawn into an injection pipette and is injected directly into the egg. ICSI is indicated when sperm count is low, where sperm is surgically retrieved, or if they are concerned with its fertilizing capacity. The embryos are then checked and graded according to the number of cells and presence of fragmentation. Grade 1 embryos are the best, but grade 2 embryos are more common. After fertilization, the cells of the embryo will divide. On the second day, there are 2 to 4 cells, and on the third day, 6 to 8 cells. Usually, embryos are transferred at this stage. If there are adequate number of good embryos, these embryos may be cultured to day 5 to allow selection of the best embryo to achieve a pregnancy. Occasionally, there is no fertilization or the embryos are not of good quality. Under these circumstances, there may be no embryos available for transfer. For the embryo transfer, a speculum is inserted in the vagina. Once the embryo is loaded in the catheter, the catheter is placed inside the womb. The embryos are then injected into the womb under ultrasound guidance. A full bladder may be helpful to assist visualization by ultrasound. The catheter is then checked to ensure that the embryos have been deposited in the womb. After embryo transfer, you may go home. The most important thing is to take your hormonal medication that is prescribed to support your pregnancy. You may be given two weeks hospitalization leave. During this time, do not lie in bed the whole day. It is not necessary, nor does it increase your chance of getting pregnant. You should go on with your normal life and eat healthily. A blood test for pregnancy is then performed two weeks after embryo transfer. What are the possible problems that may arise? Some of these problems are ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, miscarriage, multiple pregnancies, and ovarian torsion. One of the most serious complications of IVF is that of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, or OHSS. Fortunately, it is not common. This results from production of too many follicles and high female hormone levels. Symptoms usually appear after egg collection and occasionally just before pregnancy test. The ovaries are enlarged and fluid may accumulate in your abdomen. In the mild form, you may experience bloatedness, vomiting and diarrhea. Monitoring may be all that is necessary. In a more severe form, you may have breathlessness and may require hospitalization. Please do come to the hospital if you feel unwell. Measures will be taken to minimize hyperstimulation as your safety is of utmost importance to us. Miscarriage is slightly higher in IVF than in the normal population. This is why an early scan is performed 4 weeks after your pregnancy test to ascertain fetal well-being. There is also the possibility of ectopic pregnancy, that is pregnancy outside the womb which is not viable and can cause internal bleeding. 
The risk of birth defect in the general population is low, about 2-3%. With IVF, there is some research that suggests it may be increased, but it is still low. Suffice to say, most IVF babies are normal. Traditionally, more embryos are transferred because it increases pregnancy rate. However, that also increases the risk of multiple birth, which carries health risks to the mother and babies. Mothers with multiple pregnancy are at higher risk of having diabetes, high blood pressure, miscarriage, and other complications of pregnancy. They are also more likely to require a caesarean section. Multiple pregnancies may also lead to deliveries of baby before full term. This baby may then require ICU care. They are also at greater risk of breathing problems, brain damage, and even death. Because of this, usually no more than two embryos are transferred. Some couples may find it harder to cope physically, emotionally, and financially with multiple babies. In care, our multiple pregnancy rate is about 15%. The ovaries are enlarged as a result of the hormone injection. Very rarely, it can twist and cause pain. Pain is typically sudden and intermittent. Please come to the hospital if you experience any pain. What is the success rate with IVF? The average IVF pregnancy rate is about 25-30% to 30 per cycle. Although this may appear low, this is reasonable when compared to the 20% chance of natural conception in a normal couple in one cycle. The pregnancy rate falls with increasing age of the wife. Hence, do not wait till you are too old as it can affect your chances of success. Pregnancy rate when the wife is over 40 is much lower and carries higher risk of miscarriage. For women above 35, there is also a higher risk of Down syndrome. However, you need not be overly concerned. Once you are pregnant, appropriate screening tests will be offered to you. What is the MOH rules and regulations? Under the MOH rules, you are allowed to go for IVF only if you are married. What is the cost of IVF? The estimated cost of IVF is about fifteen to eighteen thousand dollars. There is co-funding by the government to help you offset some of the cost if any one of the couple is Singaporean and the wife is under forty at the time of their first attempt at assisted reproduction or IUI procedures. You may also use your Medisafe to pay for your treatment if you are eligible. The IVF treatment can be physically, financially and emotionally taxing. Hence, it is important that you support each other during this journey. It is normal to feel disappointed if one does not get pregnant. Start this journey with realistic expectations. If you need any help, feel free to talk to your doctor or our nurses. We also have professional counselling services. Wanting to have a baby of your own is very natural. For some couples, IVF is a way to fulfill their dreams. Our care team consists of doctors, nurses, sonographers and embryologists who work together to look after you in your IVF journey. Our aspiration is to help you bring home a baby of your own. While this is not always possible for every couple, we hope to at least help you navigate this journey because patients are at the heart of all we do.